So, hello and welcome. Uh, I'm Kevin from Queer Amnesty Karlsruhe, which is a um, subgroup of Amnesty International um, that fights for the human rights of queer people around the world. And today I am joined by Edward of Kiev Pride. Welcome, Edward. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Edward Rees. I am a, a queer and non-binary person from Ukraine, and uh, I am an activist in queer and non-binary issues. And also I'm working for Cave Pride, which is uh, the biggest organization, uh, not the biggest, but, but the most visible LGBTQ organization in Ukraine. Uh, we are those who make uh, the biggest uh, pride march in Ukraine, in Kyiv, in the capital. And uh, this year we had to uh, hold uh, the 10th March, actually. Mm -hmm. So we are doing this from 2012. Uh, but we won't be doing it, unfortunately, mm -hmm. in Kyiv. Yeah. Uh, also, we are uh, making uh, advocacy programs for uh, different laws for LGBTQ people, we are making different events. We are holding not only the Pride March, but also the Pride Month with great amount of different events and lectures and uh, talks and everything. And we're working with businesses. We are uh, creating the community. So like everything that could be done, we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since you already uh, touched upon the, the work that you have been doing before uh, the war now, could you talk a bit about that? How was the situation for queer people in Ukraine before this full-scale invasion? Uh, well, I would say that Ukraine is uh, totally and definitely not the worst country for queer people. Uh, we still don't have... Uh, uh, how do you call it? Oh, my God. Um, gay marriage. Uh, but uh, we have, as I experienced being a trans person in Europe, I'm now in Copenhagen, we have in Ukraine a uh, quite easy and simple and fast transition process, uh, much more easy and fast than in European countries, and it was a shock for me, actually. Um, in uh, Ukraine, it... Uh, I spent around uh, two months to get my valuation that I am trans. Mm. And for example, in Denmark, it's two years. So. Oh, wow. And um, we definitely have some homophobic and transphobic groups, but they are not represented in the government. Uh, when there are uh, elections in Ukraine, right-wing parties don't win. They have like around one or two percent in voting. So I would say that uh, we definitely have some issues, but uh, as a whole, Ukraine is really moving to uh, the ruling of human rights. And uh, we are, LGBTQ organizations in Ukraine is uh, are doing our best to make it as fast as possible. Mm. Like the, the whole, uh, now when this full scale war started and many people had to leave their homes in Ukraine and go to Europe and we saw how Europe works and now many of us uh, stopped saying European values mm. <laughs> because we understood like what we called European values in Ukraine, it's not like the European values mm -hmm. actually. So uh, I would say we value human rights and uh, equality, and we are definitely moving to make Ukraine the country which has all those things. Mm -hmm. Now, you already talked or you already said that you are in Denmark, that many activists are out of um, Ukraine at the moment. Can you talk um, about the changes that occurred with uh, the full-scale Russian invasion in February? Uh, how did things change and uh, how did they evolve since then for your work? Well, actually, I guess uh, the majority of Ukrainian LGBTQ activists actually stayed in Ukraine mm. uh, because it's really important to continue helping people who are staying because 
a great amount of uh, trans people and gay men can't leave, for example, because we have this uh, military law, which doesn't allow people with M in their passport to leave the country, yeah. or it's harder for them to leave. So uh, many people are volunteering, many people are actually on the front line. We have uh, the group of LGBTQ soldiers who are fighting right now. And um, Actually, Ukrainians are not uh, the people who want to flee from the war because mm. many are returning right now. And I wouldn't flee actually, but I needed because I was um, I had my uh, top surgery scheduled in Ukraine mm. for March, mm. and I just have to do it. That's why yeah. I moved to another country where. I'm trying to do it, but not in Denmark, in Sweden, <laughs> because okay. in Denmark it's hard. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what changed, I guess, all the LGBTQ organizations had to shift their work immediately, because even uh, the organizations like us who worked more for changing the society, for visibility, um, we are also like a service organization now because uh, we have to provide people with uh, needs, we have to provide people with shelter, uh, we have to provide people who lost their homes with mm -hmm. help, with uh, psychological help and everything. So we do what we didn't do before. Mm -hmm. And uh, many queer organizations, I guess all of them have like drastically shifted their work now. Okay, and on the service, uh... The services that you provide, are they still focused on queer people or are you just helping wherever it's needed? Well, actually, I guess uh, we are helping wherever it's needed, but definitely it's the priorities for queer people yeah. uh, because we are queer organizations and there are many organizations which help other yeah. people, for example, like people with disabilities or older people and so on. Uh, but we are helping everyone. For example, uh, Cave Pride was... Uh, uh, bring uh, groceries and food to the kitchen who cooked for people in Bucha. Mm -hmm. So just for everyone who is yeah. living in uh, this city. And uh, I guess we are doing what we need. And we are definitely uh, helping the army, yeah. uh, providing uh, different uh, equipment that is needed when we have a chance to mm -hmm. do it from Poland mm -hmm. or... Canada or other countries which can give us this equipment yeah. so uh, we are helping um, LGBTQ mil military like the persons who are in the army right now and who are queer and it's also helping the army because it doesn't matter if this person is queer but he is or her or she is fighting so everyone in Ukraine is a part of the army now mm -hmm and everyone is fighting on different frontiers and like i am fighting in this informational frontier yeah. though i'm not not in ukraine uh so i guess we all became uh, one big family and one big army and uh, it doesn't quite matter if you're queer right now mm -hmm. okay yeah i've seen those pictures on your instagram profile of uh, queer people fighting in the army and um though i didn't understand the ukrainian uh, description i i understood that you showed queer people uh, how they were living their lives before mm -hmm. the, the the invasion and how what they're doing now namely fighting in the military and i was wondering what is the can, can you see any um how to say effect of this in the Ukrainian uh, society? Is this actually changing something? Is it actually? Yeah, it really is. Uh, we are seeing that people are writing comments like, uh, oh, I didn't know that like queer people are fighting in the war. And now, and many people are uh, writing something like, I understood that it doesn't matter who you love. It matters what a person you are. It matters, do you love Ukraine? Mm -hmm and everything so it's it's really helping and i guess uh when the war is over uh, cave pride or other organizations will be making uh, will ask people uh have their uh thoughts changed you know mm -hmm. so uh we have some statistics about how it was like last year and we will be making 
asking some people, uh, making some statistic reports about how it changed after yeah, the war. I'm because I'm, tot I'm totally sure that we will see the changes. Okay. And since the motto of this year's uh, Christopher Street Day in Karlsruhe is uh, on queer youth and queer young people, could you talk a bit about what the situation is like right now for queer youth and, and queer young people in Ukraine? Yeah, I guess uh, mostly, like I am actually the person who is working with queer young people. Mm. I am a TikToker and I'm communicating with them and I'm uh, making different events for uh, non-binary people who are mostly young. So I guess the main problem that they have right now is that uh, besides the war itself, is that they have to live with their families. Mm. So people who were, for example, students and they got out of their transphobic or homophobic families into other cities, now they have to return mm. and live with their families and live with their families in different European countries because many of them fled the war, they have like smaller children and so on, and many of them lost their homes in Kharkiv, in Mariupol, in other cities. So uh, they are really struggling in this situation. And sometimes uh, the parents are even abusive. So I actually like have this story of a non-binary person, a minor who left Ukraine with their family and uh, their mother is abusive, she's beating them, and uh, now they're in Romania, I guess. So like, I'm trying to help this mm -hmm. child find some help in Romania, yeah. because like, I can't go to this, that country to help the person because it's too far. Yeah. And I'm trying to help remotely to find some resources and so on. Uh, so it's really crazy. and. It's a story that I know about because this person yeah. is my acquaintance, but there are many of these stories, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, like people fled their homes to colleges, universities, mm -hmm. for example, or just uh, got out of the family mm -hmm. to work in other city. And now they have to return yeah. in this environment uh, to the people who don't understand them, to people yeah. who misgender them, to people who uh, have who push them to leave their loved ones if they are gay or lesbian. So uh, it's really hard actually to help everyone. And many cases are really painful. And uh, the other thing, I guess, that as everyone, they are uh, really distressed and they are uh, lost because, you know, when you had your life, in Ukraine, you had plans, then you have to move somewhere, Germ Germany, Denmark, France, Poland, and you have to build everything from scratch, from yeah. zero. And uh, many of them definitely want to return, but uh, if they are minors, they can't return without their parents. Yeah. So many issues for the, young, uh, for the young ones. And uh, Cave Pride is doing actually as much as we can to help. So we have um, uh, three volunteer psychotherapists who mm. are making online support groups each week, mm. three groups each week. Uh, and mostly I am a moderator of these groups, like I'm making all the technical things. Yeah. And mostly they, uh, they are people around like from 16 and sometimes there is a girl who, who is 13. Uh, from 13 to 25 mm. the people who are coming to those groups mostly yeah. so it's like young people who are lost who are are far from their loved ones far from their communities mm. and like we have a big queer community in ukraine in different cities and uh, now they have to leave they are losing their friends they are queer community uh, they have to adapt in new, uh, like, sometimes xenophobic uh, place, mm. you know, like, I am uh, living in um, a refugee, not a refugee center, but like a dorm, 
now in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. And it's a place uh, mostly for women with small children. Mm -hmm. Like women with small children are mostly those who flee the war. And uh, being a trans person in this kind of a place can be painful because you mm -hmm. have to explain everyone who you are and what is happening like Denmark is quite acceptive like the country itself mm -hmm. but Ukrainian women sometimes don't understand yeah. and this situation is also hard for many people when you already established your world in your lovely Kharkiv for example and then you go somewhere and you have to establish your world again yeah I imagine but it's it's great to see uh, the the variety of work that you do. It's really inspiring, and I would like to know, um, like in the end now, how can people in other European countries, specifically in Germany, support your your work so that it's not just some information that we got now from you, but we can also do something to support this really important work that you do. Well, we have, I guess, three points. Uh, first is definitely donations because. We are using donations from international community uh, to establish the shelter that we are building right now in Kyiv to help directly to people who are in need. Uh, we definitely need uh, people who can um, take Ukrainian queer refugees to their homes. We are also having this uh, exchange like program, which is totally improvised mm. uh, people from european countries from canada from us uh, they are sending us information to cave pride's email that like i can uh, give a room for several people or for a queer person or for a trans mm. person uh, and we are pushing passing this information to the ones in need because as i said like for many, it's really important, and firstly for trans people, it's really important to live in a queer environment. Yeah. Because yeah. when we are getting to a new country, right, we are all put into some refugee centers and it can be harsh. Yeah. Uh, so this is the second thing. And you definitely should, and in Denmark, or uh, sorry, in Germany first, uh, you definitely should go to... Uh, protests and rallies and ask your countries to help Ukraine to arm Ukraine because like uh, our first lady uh, said several days ago uh, humanitarian help is amazing but if all the children die there will be no one to eat children's food that you provide so we need arms we need military aid because Russia doesn't stop and it won't stop before I guess all the Russian uh, army is dead on the Ukrainian soil I don't know so we need military help a lot and that's why I'm asking on every interview for all the Europeans to come to the rallies to mm -hmm. protest to ask their governments for arming Ukraine and uh, I guess the last thing is, uh, I don't know if you heard about it already, uh, the Cave Pride March, March for Quality, uh, will be joined this year with Warsaw Pride in the capital of Poland. And we are marching together for peace, for stopping the war in Ukraine. Uh, so we are waiting for you, all Europe, on this uh, big march which is really important uh, to show everyone that ukrainian queer people who had to flee their homes that we are still active that we are still uh, demanding our rights we are still demanding help for ukraine and we all uh, want to make this event as big as possible so yeah. it's it's an invitation to Great. the joint pride of Warsaw and Kiev. Thank you. Can you say when it is, the date? 25th of uh, June. Oh, okay, 25th of June. Yes, so we have everything on our social media of Kiev Pride yeah. in English as well. So it's totally easy to find all the details. 
Okay, great. Yeah, we will show all these information also after this video so people can donate and get in touch with you directly. And maybe we can even organize a group um, coming to the Warsaw Pride. That would be just amazing. That's amazing. And um, yeah, well, now I can just say thank you so much. Uh, the work that you do is so incredibly in inspiring and um, it's amazing what you do. Thank you for doing what you do. And um, thank you for giving us this interview and an insight in what it is to be queer and Ukrainian uh, these days. Thanks a lot for having me. Thank you. Bye.